Hi guys, it's me, Alexa from Alexa Plays Games. <laughs> Since I had so much fun commenting on the North American Monthly Finals last month, I decided to do another match this month too. The first match that caught my eye was Crazy Raccoon vs. Coco Loco, but that one made me pretty mad, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> And they had like weird internet issues, so the stream was also bad, and you can't even see all of it, so I decided against it. <laughs> but since Crazy Raccoon has world champions on their team, it made me think of Zeta, since they won worlds last year and they also struggled this monthly finals. I don't know what was in the water, but everything was turned upside down this month. <laughs> Almost all of my reliable predictions were wrong and I almost didn't get the pin, although don't worry guys, I got it eventually. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into the crazy match between Zeta and SK during the 2024 EMEA May Monthly Finals. So while I like both Zeta and SK, I'm not super emotionally invested in either of these teams. <laughs> I know I have the Zeta pin and spray, but I got that to support Shatampo. <laughs> Because he used to be Zeta, and they don't have a crazy raccoon chair sprays. Like, what else am I supposed to do? <laughs> but that's not to say I don't like the current EU Zeta team. Just, I'm not nearly as big of a fan of them as I am of other pro players. Same thing could be said of SK. I think they're really good players. I enjoy watching them and learn a lot from them. I just generally enjoy watching NA pro players more is all. <laughs> but EMEA is definitely not a region to sniff at. They have the fiercest competition out of any other region, so these teams are incredibly organized and professional. You can definitely see that, how they have their own, you know, fancy chairs and set up in their own headquarters. Like, these teams take this game very seriously, and there's a lot you can learn from them skill-wise and draft-wise, so let's get into it. Starting out with Brawl Ball Center Stage, this map is very interesting. I actually really like it. You can play a whole bunch of different brawlers on it. Um, just always make sure to ban Rico. He's so annoying on this map. Oh my god. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> Zeta got the ball rolling with Sandy, who might just be the best controller in the current meta. Not to mention, he also provides the added bonus of visibility support with his roots and star power on grassy maps. SK then answered with one of the best counters to Sandy Sandstorm, M's, because her super is also around the same size as Sandy Sandstorm, so as long as she has her super ready, Zeta can't benefit from the invisibility. Not to mention, she is a solid tank counter and Brawl Ball always attracts tanks. Speaking of which, <laughs> SK followed that up with Rosa, who thrives on grassy maps like Center Stage. Since both Sandy and Ems thrive on grassy maps as well, it seems like both teams are drafting in order to utilize the grass rather than destroying it like some players tend to do. Zeta then goes with the tank that counters tanks to deal with Rosa. El Primo, <laughs> who is also a classic fan favorite in Brawl Ball. While he will mostly struggle into M's, his super does allow him to jump on top of her, which is her biggest weakness. Finally, Zayna finished their draft with Janet, who, if you see my Janet guide, has the makings of an amazing visibility support brawler, even though nerfs and hypercharges have knocked her out of the S tier into the D tier. Last but not least, SK pick Poco, since he is always smart to have as a healer and his attack is so long and wide, it would be useful for scouting out the enemy when Sandy throws his sandstorm. Honestly, I found it hilarious that the commentators didn't understand Zeta's Janet pick. It took them forever to realize why Zeta would pick Janet, but if you guys have seen my Janet guide, you know she's my favorite grassy map support brawler. While ever since her nerf and the introduction of hypercharges, you hardly see her in pro games anymore, she is a great choice as a support brawler on this map. Her gadget comes in handy for visibility in the grass and countering invisibility in general, <laughs> but I wouldn't use her stage view star power in Brawl Ball, you really have to time out when she takes flight wisely because you don't want enemies just walking the ball in while you're up in the air unable to stop them. 
Not to mention, you need the faster focus Vocal Warm Up provides to deal with all of the tanks. <laughs> but picking Janet also prevents SK from having two brawlers to counter Sandy Sandstorm since Janet's gadget doesn't require charging up her super to activate it. But the commentators were still like, maybe it's for her gadget, I don't know. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that Janet super kill was so satisfying. <laughs> Meow is definitely cooking on the Janet. He's doing beautiful work, but she lacks the DPS to team wipe. I mean, she's not Amber, <laughs> which is why I think of her as more of a support brawler in the current meta. So when Meow was the last one standing, it was easy for SK to overwhelm him and score. But the good news is, the thing about Sandy <laughs> is he might get pushed around before he gets his first super. But once he has his super in hand, tables will turn, my friend. In this case, Sandy's super bought them enough time to allow Naoi to rejoin his teammates. With Naoi doing a classic El Primo Throne super as Meow and Girl clear his path, Naoi was able to even the score. With only 30 seconds left on the clock, it could go either way. Garo has his hypercharge but no super, but so does Lana, which means the dwarf, by the way. <laughs> Interesting name since I'm pretty sure he's over six foot tall. <laughs> The interesting thing about how Zeta are using Sandy Sandstorm is they're barely stepping inside of it and it seems are content with using it to play mind games instead. <laughs> Force SK to scatter so they're easy to pinch and then set the stage for them to dominate over time. At this point, Zeta is definitely going to want to use Sandy Sandstorm to put pressure on SK. However, Joker demonstrates beautifully how M's can prevent Sandy and friends from benefiting from the invisibility. But another hypercharge comes into play and Zeta is able to overwhelm SK anyway and take the game. Starting the next round, it's clear Mia wants to prevent an early SK goal and goes a little aggressive on the side grass, attracting the attention of SK and bringing the fight to him. This helps girls Sandy feed off their aggression a bit before they back off. This allows Zeta to push forward a bit, but Ems is one of the best brawlers at controlling the entire enemy team all on her own, and paired with Poco, they can cover a large area with their basic attack and super, allowing Joker and Yoshi to keep both Naoi and Gara at bay as Lana responds. Completely undeterred by SK managing to get another goal, Meow isn't taking no for an answer. <laughs> so Janet's gadget makes another appearance in the side lane and that creates some much needed pressure so now Naoi and Garo can work on their next move. With Sandy's hypercharged sandstorm, Zeta manages to take mid control, forcing SK to try and make a run for it down a side lane, at which point it's easy for Zeta to pinch them and even the score once more, charging their supers and hypercharges in the process. Now I'm sure you're getting a strange sense of deja vu, but this time SK has a full minute to respawn, so they seem a lot less rushed. <laughs> but you can see the benefit of Sandy's visibility support as it either reveals SK or forces them to retreat a bit out of the grass. After Naoi wins the hypercharged battle of the tanks, Zeta successfully breaks through a layer of SK's defense and pushes them back into their spawn. Meanwhile, SK tries to be sneaky on the other side of the field, <laughs> but both Yoshi and Lana get punished for it before they can even make it out of their spawn. Zeta now has asserted complete dominance over the mid, forcing SK to try and find a way to get out of their spawn, but the oppressive nature of Sandy Sandstorm becomes evident. Even with all of these countermeasures SK made to try and counter Sandy Sandstorm, they are just locked in their spawn like it's a prison. With the combined elements of Zeta controlling the mid and Sandy Sandstorms keeping SK locked into their spawn, Zeta managed to overwhelm SK and take the set. 
Knowing the meta is always important, and tier lists definitely have their use, but when it comes down to it, how good a brawler will perform depends on the player wielding it. Janet has the tools needed to support her teammate in a way no other brawler can, and in the hands of Meow, her lack of damage output clearly wasn't much of a problem, seeing as the man doesn't seem capable of missing a shot with 502 DPS. <laughs> it's easy to underestimate support brawlers, but on the right map, they can really make all of the difference as long as you play them well. Thank you Zeta for the perfect example of how to use Janet as a support brawler in a pro match. Next up we have Heist with one of my favorite Heist maps, Hot Potato. <laughs> This map is just so fun to me because you have the grassy mid and side lanes that you can be sneaky with. <laughs> so this map isn't just tank and assassin friendly, any class of brawler can find a place on this map. And as a Jessie main, I'd like to note that it's my favorite Jessie heist map since her scouting abilities comes in handy in the mid. With tank counters being banned on both sides, namely Surge and Cordelius, <laughs> you can tell both teams want to go tanky once more. So it's no surprise when Zeta starts out with the tanky king of heist, Chuck. <laughs> Without Cordelius, who is definitely Chuck's best counter, SK pick Buzz, whose stun comes in handy to counter Chuck, but can also inflict plenty of damage on the safe. They then follow it up with the princess of heist, Colette, the queen Melody having been banned, so Colette will happily ascend to the throne to feed off Chuck's tank and melt the safe with her hypercharged supers. Anticipating SK might want to pick my girl Charlie, Zeta snatches her up. She's probably the best replacement shutdown brawler for Cordelius, with the added bonus of being stupid good in Heist, <laughs> with her spiders and crazy fast auto aim shots to melt down the safe. And you'll never guess who makes a reappearance, El Primo! <laughs> He's not just getting brawl ball guys, but you might want to switch up his build a bit for Heist. I recommend using his asteroid belt gadget with his El Fuego star power when you do, but his super does come in handy in Heist as it helps him fly over the enemy's defense and get to work dealing damage to the safe. Finally, SK finishes with a pick I never want to face on this map, Dynamite. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every Dynamite who made my life miserable on this map, <laughs> they feel almost invincible most of the time, and there's a reason SK picked him last, because aside from El Primo, when he has a super at least, both Chuck and Charlie will probably never be able to touch him as long as he hides behind walls well, which, I mean, what pro wouldn't be good at that? <laughs> With Chuck on the side of Zeta, SK is definitely going to feel pressured into getting as much damage on the safe as humanly possible early on. Chuck takes a while to set up properly, so the best way to deal with him, aside from countering him with Cordelius, <laughs> is to beat him to it. Both teams already have a tank on the safe, so it's clear they're both prioritizing damage to the safe over defense. But with an invincible dynamite on SK's team, <laughs> they stand a good chance at giving Chuck a run for his money. But with Chuck all set up and on the safe, SK is now distracted from the objective and instead start trying to defend. It's all looking good for Zeta at this point, SK is barely managing to defend, and Chuck just seems to need one more go at the safe and Zeta can take the game, he just needs to regen a bit. Wait, whoa, oh my god. Not gonna lie, didn't see that coming. Round 2 seems to be starting out just like the round before, with tanks on both teams speeding over to the safe, and once again, Dynamite is invincible. <laughs> but somehow, now he manages to get the last post on the safe before going down, that's crazy! 
SK may have defended well and took down Chuck, but he's now all set up, so like something comes over Zeta and they stop caring about defending whatsoever and just storm the safe. <laughs> SK must have been expecting a game like last round because they are like way too late to respond here. Seemingly traumatized by the speed race that Zeta just surprised them with, SK is like weirdly crowded in the middle <laughs> as if determined to stop Zeta in their tracks. Pun intended. <laughs> but speaking of tracks, they've also, as a team, seem to have forgotten that they can't stand on Chuck's tracks without, you know, dying. <laughs> Zeta went for the save, but that's the thing about team wipes and heists. It doesn't actually tend to help your team so much because the enemy respawns at the same time and then they can just take you out while they're still invincible. Which is why SK is able to start giving Zeta a taste of their own medicine at this point. While well, Naoi is still doing his best to go to work on the safe, Miyam and Garo are struggling to defend, and a call it super seals their fate, and SK walks away with the set. Boy, was that utter chaos. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> what else do you expect from Heist, really? <laughs> It's an objective-driven mode, and each team was just determined as the other to complete the objective as fast as humanly possible. So, it's kind of crazy though, that each team's stats are almost exactly the same. Seems like it could have gone either way, this set. Well, after all of that, <laughs> I'm kind of relieved we're switching to a passive mode now. Knockout New Horizons. Since Buster has proven to be quite the menace in Knockout recently, especially in pro matches, it seems both teams wanted him out of the running. <laughs> but maybe Zeta should have saved that ban for someone even more terrifying in the hands of pros. Melody. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love my girl Melody, but she is scary in the right hands. Absolutely deadly. So SK was right to grab her first pick. Zeta answered with the evil twins, Larry and Nori, who, after a dozen nerfs, are finally less evil, but still plenty annoying to deal with. They then follow up the twins with yet another one of my girls, Pearl, <laughs> who is low-key one of the best brawlers in Knockout. Her mechanics are designed for impassive modes. You want to give her plenty of times to bake her cookies so she can melt her enemies alive. With lots of love, of course. SK then answer with an interesting choice? <laughs> Cordelius. Not that Cordy is a bad pick in Knockout, but now they have two assassins on their team. Not the most well-rounded comp in the world. <laughs> but my guy Cordy can turn a 3v3 into a 2v2 and use this realm in many different sneaky ways, including canceling out hypercharges. The only big downside to him in Knockout is he almost always gets outranged. They finish their draft with Byron, who is always good to have, seeing as he will provide some range for their team, who desperately needs it, <laughs> and Melody always performs best with a healer on her team. Zeta then finish up with my girl Charlie, which I'm not gonna lie, like the draft order is so strange because she's usually first pick. I mean, <laughs> but both she and Cordelius can shut down pretty much anyone with their super, while Cordelius can turn a 3v3 into a 2v2, Charlie has the added bonus of being able to turn a 3v3 into a 2v3, and has a much longer range than Cordelius. I'm not gonna lie, I find these comps to be interesting. <laughs> the only brawler with any real range is Byron, which is knockout is pretty rare, but I mean, we don't need the same old, same old. Let's see how this unfolds. SK put Lena on the melody, and it's clear from the beginning that he's willing to take risks to charge up her super, but is forced to use one of her supers to escape. <laughs> melody can be reckless like that though, since she gets three supers in one, and her shield gadget is absolutely broken. <laughs> While Zeta is grouping up around their Larry, SK is spreading out. 
Joker is seemingly trying to find the best place to charge up his super, so he heads into Zeta's spawn, but now he manages to scare him off. The gas is rolling in now, which means Zeta must be feeling a lot of pressure to charge up their supers. Yeah, while Melody does best into 1v1 matchups, it's not out of the scope of reason to assume she could easily take out both Larry and Pearl all on her own, but Charlie's spiders required no super and helped me out finish the job. Can he 1v2? Oh, so close. <laughs> During the second round, Joker already has his super ready, so he doesn't need to tiptoe around in order to charge it up. Instead, he goes straight for Melody's biggest foe on Zeta's team, Charlie. <laughs> Joker is so crazy fast, Meow can barely respond. Now with Charlie out of the way, Naoi and Garo will need to charge up their supers and fast. One well aimed bar and super from Yoshi, and most of Pearl's tank melts away, leaving Girl to fend for himself and SK win the first round. Despite losing the last round, Seda is sticking to their initial strategy of grouping together, so Lena and Joker get to work tiptoeing in and out of range to charge up their supers. <laughs> Well, poor Lena seems to be on his own. <laughs> Yoshi is being Joker's heel slave so he can run in and out of range despite being pummeled every once in a while by Larry Bombs. Because of this, Joker manages to get his super early and snatches Garo into a 1v1 in his realm. Don't know if that was his plan or not, but if it was, that was super impressive. Unfortunately for SK, Joker's super didn't get them anywhere and Garo makes it back to his teammates safe and sound. Not only that, but... <laughs> Yoshi wastes his super on himself for god knows what reason, so <laughs> they're back to the same stalemate as before. <laughs> Lana makes a daring dash into the gas to take out Zeta, but somehow Garo makes it out of there alive with only 122 HP, <laughs> which is apparently enough to help me out pinch Yoshi. Round 2, SK is back to the drawing board, down a round and still having to charge up their supers once more. Joker has a super, but why isn't he using it? Oh, he wanted his hypercharge. <laughs> It's always all about the purple button, isn't it, guys? <laughs> I wonder what sneaky play he has up his sleeve now that he has it. Oh my god! <laughs> that honestly looks so terrifying. <laughs> Poor Naoi. <laughs> A play like that would have made me jump and scream a little, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but now that Joker has used his hypercharge, it seems Zeta thinks it would be smart to just start the next round with their supers intact and not feed Joker's Cordelius. <laughs> In the last round of this game, Zeta seems to have the advantage for now, since they have all their supers charged up. Once SK charges their supers though, I'm expecting it to get a bit chaotic. <laughs> yeah, Lena must have gotten a bit complacent there. <laughs> I mean, Zeta really hasn't deviated from their strategy at all, so I don't blame him for thinking they wouldn't cocoon him, okay? <laughs> but despite the pet chaos, <laughs> SK makes it out of there alive somehow. Now both sides have used their super, so I'm sure they're going to want the time they have before the gas closes in to charge up their supers. <laughs> wow, so Meow just pops off once more with a Charlie hypercharge, <laughs> manages to take out Yoshi and Kakulina, so Zeta is able to walk away with this game. Okay, Zeta, I know this might be a bit much to ask, but can you guys, like, turn around, like, just this once? 
pretty please? No? Okay, fine. I'm not giving up though. Round three of this set and I guess Zeta is just sticking with their original strategy. <laughs> not much has changed. <laughs> they must be happy with how the last game worked out. But Joker is being even more aggressive as he charges up his super. I feel like he's not even bothering to dodge some of Larry's bombs seeing as he has Yoshi's Byron feeling him up. <laughs> But I mean, Joker has had his super for a while now. Why hasn't he made a play? Lanel looks ready to go in for a kill too. What's the holdup? I get it now. Joker wants his hypercharge even faster this game. I mean, since it did make such a big difference in the previous two games, it makes sense that he's willing to be more aggressive to get it. I guess time is up with the gas rolling in. Oh my god. Whoa! Now I on the pearl just melted them alive! <laughs> With Yoshi somehow snagging that clutch kill, taking down Gara on the Larry, and Joker charging up his hypercharge, SK is definitely turning this game in their favor. Joker seems to be up to something sneaky. <laughs> Ooh, wonder what he's up to. <laughs> I guess Joker decided to use his super, but not his hypercharge just yet, but clearly he didn't need to. Poor now he's all alone. <laughs> seems like he's just gonna try and charge up his super. Okay, I'll also charge up his hypercharge. And get a kill. Okay, now we <laughs> get some last minute revenge, I guess. I guess since last round, SK managed to beat Zeta to their corner, they must have decided to switch sides so they don't lose a teammate early on in the round. <laughs> but it's kind of crazy. I mean, this is the last round of the set, and honestly, like, as it stands right now, like, it could go either way. <laughs> it has been crazy close so far, right? Every single set. Well, I guess all we can do now is just see how things play out. I mean, Joker has his hypercharge, but so does Naoi. So yeah, <laughs> could go either way. Oh my god, like, I get it. This is a passive mode, but can you guys, like, please, oh my god, please attack each other? <laughs> <laughs> this is why NA is so much more fun to watch. Like, come on, stop being so passive. Oh my god, finally, Zeta's making a move. <laughs> oh wow, and it looks like Charlie has won the Battle of the Shutdown Brawlers. <laughs> With Joker down and Lana unable to secure a double kill, Zeta take the set. While Joker's stats definitely look more impressive than Meow's, keep in mind that Charlie's kills almost always get stolen, but her cocoons definitely played a big role in their victory. But aside from that, the biggest surprise is Larry and Lori only getting one kill. <laughs> Maybe the evil twin should be devoted to the slightly annoying twins? Enough with passive modes, please, please give me some action, I am begging you. <laughs> EMEA is just way too passive for me. <laughs> oh, thank god. Next up, Hot Zone Parallel Plays. <laughs> now, Hot Zone is my favorite, but I really hate how they made the wall in the middle an unbreakable wall. I feel like it ruined this map, but I digress. Let's see how the pros deal with it. Of course, SK steal Melody first pick. <laughs> Melody's musical notes can take out enemies hiding behind walls, especially if she uses her second gadget, but even without it, she has her speed to go back and forth between zones and help her teammates pinch. In response, Zeta goes with Charlie to deal with Melody. Charlie is just so great in so many modes, but especially control-based modes like Hot Zone and Gem Grab. 
They then follow her up with Byron, who is a favorite amongst pros for his ability to heal at long range. Byron also indicates to me that Data is definitely planning a tank last pick. SK then picks my girl, Amber, who is one of the best brawlers to counter Charlie. Not only does her Pierce attack melt Charlie and her spiders, you can essentially fight auto-aim with auto-aim. Then, just in case two S-tier brawlers weren't enough, <laughs> SK also picks Angelo, who is just the most annoying mosquito with his crazy fast movement speed, jump gadget, healing star power, and deadly arrows which inflict an insane amount of damage. Yeah, he's probably the most broken brawler in the game right now. Finally, Zeta confirms my suspicions by picking Sam. Hmm, I wonder if they were taking notes last monthly finals. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm not saying that they definitely stole the idea from the ever goaded Philip, the coach of then JCT and now KCP. <laughs> Second wasn't the first pro to play Sam in Hot Zone, but I think it's an interesting coincidence to say the very least. <laughs> Do I have any evidence to substantiate this claim? No. Am I weird for shipping this bromance? Maybe, but Sam is a great choice in Hot Zone. He has a lot of useful utility that's especially useful in this mode, particularly his speed and healing. In the hands of a good Sam player, Sam is practically immortal. Not to mention Second did prove last month that Sam is amazing into sharpshooters, but they to have an uphill battle to climb with both Angelo and Amber to contend with. As I predicted, Byron is meant to be Sam's heal slave, but the combined damage from Angelo and Amber is too much for Sam even with the extra heals. That left Gara on the Byron vulnerable to my fire goddess, Amber. <laughs> and with two takedowns, SK push up the map. Oh my god, SK has picked just such a disgusting comp. Like. It's clear they're taking out the big guns to prevent Zeta from taking the set and advancing to the semifinals. I mean, I will always love an Ampy pick, don't get me wrong, but Angelo and Melody? Talk about trying to use broken brawlers to turn the tides in their favor. But despite all the extra damage on SK's side, Naoi on the Sam is proving he has what it takes to play a pretty immortal Sam. <laughs> but that doesn't help much when Lana on the Melody can just use his three supers to just speed right past them and get onto Zeta's home zone. Now, SK has a comfortable lead at 81%. I guess instead of prioritizing defense, Zeta has decided to push up the map and take SK's home zone. What do you think, guys? Do you think that's gonna work? Oof. <laughs> Things are not looking good for Zeta right now. They were able to get more zone time, but they're still so far behind SK, and Joker on the Angelo is just sitting pretty on their zone. Wow, <laughs> how did Zeta manage to defend that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, but SK is only 3% away from taking the game. Can Zeta somehow steal this game out from under them? Never mind, make that 1% away. <laughs> Yeah, could have seen that one coming. <laughs> Melody is so broken. Since SK has proven how easy it is for them to get on Zeta's home zone, it's clear they need to prioritize defense this time around. That's the thing about two zone hot zone maps. When it's just one zone, you can direct all of your attention to the same place, which is why I find maps like Ring of Fire and Open Zone to be maps that are much easier to carry randoms on. But when there's two zones, you really have to strike the right balance. Defend your home zone just enough, but also be aggressive and make it onto the enemy zone as well. Zeta's comp is built for this balance, with Charlie being one of the best brawlers to defend their home zone and Sam and Byron being the perfect aggro support combo to make it onto the other team's zone. So if Zeta is going to take this game and win the set, they really have to maintain that balance. 
but so far, SK has been keeping their side of the map locked down, with Yoshi on the Amber playing defense using her Dancing Flames gadget to deter Sam's aggression, while Lana on the Melody and Joker on the Angelo push forward using pretty much every broken trick in the book to make it onto Zeta's zone. 35% behind, Zeta finally fights back. Now he shows just how immortal San can be, and Meow on the Charlie has his hypercharge ready to defend their zone. Ugh, unlucky. Meow misses his hypercharge super, so SK is able to overwhelm him and Yoshi in a 2v3. So now, now he has to leave his post and try to defend their home zone once more, but he gets pinched by the two most broken brawlers in the game. <laughs> and Lana and Joker can just saunter right onto Zeta's home zone at this point. There's only so much Yoshi on the Byron can do. He's meant to be Sam's heel slave, not 1v3, a team of S tier brawlers. So SK take the set and look pretty comfy in their fancy chairs, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, with these stats, it's clear why Angelo, Melody, and Amber make it so high onto pro tier lists. <laughs> the difference in damage and kills is crazy. Now we're moving on to Bounty Hideout. This might be a controversial opinion, but to be honest, I hate this map. It's so weird and awkward. It's like a bunch of empty space with random walls. Like, could we not have this one in ranked rotation, please, Supercell? There are so many better Wipeout Bounty maps that you could use instead. Looks like Zeta is fed up with dealing with Melody. <laughs> But interestingly, SK also banned Angelo, so I guess no broken brawlers this set. Maybe. Zeta gets the draft started with Max, who is definitely one of the best brawlers in the game right now with her amazing new hypercharge. There's also the added bonus that Max is a good counter for sharpshooters because speed, when used well, can make it extremely difficult for snipers to hit their shots. SK followed that up with my girl Piper, who not only is one of, if not the, best sniper in the game, due to how adaptable she is to long range and close range interactions. Her auto aimer gadget is great for punishing aggression from tanks and assassins, while her homemade recipe gadget gives her ridiculous range on open maps like this. They then opt for another one of my girls, the ever-reliable and cute Pearl, who, as I said before, thrives in passive modes. Zeta go for the recently demoted by me, <laughs> annoying twins Larry and Lori, who should still be annoying even if Piper and Pearl manage to break all their walls, but picking a thrower into wall breakers is still very interesting to me. Zeta then finish up their draft with a safe pick. Meg, who soft counters snipers like Piper. For snipers to knock her out of mech, they have to hit her multiple times and then somehow still have ammo left over to finish the job, so she tends to be a very safe, soft counter pick into snipers. Finally, SK go with a fun choice, everyone's favorite geologist, Carl. <laughs> Carl struggles into any brawler who can cancel his super with a knockback, but that's why he was safe for last. Zeta has picked a draft of brawlers who can't knock back, which makes the Piper and Pearl picks make a bit more sense as well, because they can knock back, <laughs> and they can't be used against Carl if they're on SK's team. This leaves Zeta open to Carl's insane ability to team wipe with his gadget and super combo. And while it's an absolute crime that Joker isn't using Lunar Piper as a skin, <laughs> 30 seconds in, Joker has already started breaking walls with her super. Unperturbed, however, Nahui on the max pushes up, forcing SK to back up into their spawn a bit. I mean, that's interesting. <laughs> Meow took Meg's toolbox gadget with him. Meg's toolbox is normally used to tank shots when she's low, so most players don't understand its true value, but it increases the reload speed of any ally by 35%. While SK managed to get out of their spawn, using toolbox instead of Meg's healing gadget could promote Larry back to his evil status, seeing as his reload nerf is one of the reasons why he and his twin are not so evil anymore. 
But as you could just see, Larry is so vulnerable to Carl's super, and with Lena playing distraction, Joker managed to break yet another wall, so things really aren't looking good for the annoying twins. Ooh, nice shot from Lena. <laughs> Carl finally managed to bring his annoying double onto the map, but got deleted in the process. The passive way pros generally play bounty means that if anyone gets a kill, that gives your team the advantage. If your team is behind, that means you have to be aggressive, and that's when, more often than not, mistakes are made and the enemy can take advantage of that. While a thrower pig on this map is generally a good one, without walls to hide behind and an aggressive Carl breathing down his neck, Larry can't really do his job well, which puts Zeta in a tough spot this game. The best chance Zeta has at beating SK's comp is just not feeding as much as humanly possible. As long as they don't feed Carl, he can't super in, and as long as they don't feed Piper or Pearl, they can't break walls. Well, that's definitely easier said than done. <laughs> if they play a bit less aggro with the Max and Meg, SK won't have their supers they need to torment Larry. So yeah. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying this after how much it drove me crazy during the knockout set, but um, Zeta needs to be more passive <laughs> if they want this comp to work, anyway. <laughs> This game, Zeta has definitely done a much better job at not feeding. We're about a minute into the game, and finally, SK has started charging up their supers. Zeta even managed to play pretty aggressively as well. They were just much better at not feeding as they did so. But SK now have their super, so let's see if this can turn the tides in their favor. Ooh, cool double wall break by Joker. <laughs> But is it too little too late? Time is running out and Zeta is ahead. But I mean, Zeta is completely backed into their spawn now that Garo has no more walls to hide behind. Also, the Na seems to be eyeing Naoi despite Max having her hypercharge. Oh my god, how did Lana get out of there alive? Like, how? <laughs> but... <laughs> Zeta isn't being aggressive. They know they're in the lead and are waiting for SK to make a mistake. Wow, how the tables have turned this game. I know I already asked this, but could you guys just turn around this once? No? Still not gonna give up. Match points. <laughs> I mean... Jeez, these two teams know how to stretch a quarterfinal to not just five sets, but also three rounds almost every set. <laughs> it has been crazy how back and forth these two teams have been this entire time. <laughs> on one side, you have Zeta, actual world champions, and then on the other, SK, with well-known and respected but new members. But both of these teams have been bringing so much skill to the table. What makes or breaks their chances at winning have been their drafts every single time. So what do you guys think? Does Zeta have the winning draft here or does SK? Well, I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> One minute left and neither side has gotten a kill, but since Karo can gadget in and steal the blue star early on, SK is in the lead, which means Zeta is going to have to take someone down and soon if they want to advance to the semifinals. Yoshi on the Pearl has her cookies or I guess bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> All baked with a gadget at the ready, but now he seems confident he can take her down, so he's being so aggro. Oof, that's not good for Zeta. I guess they decided to switch lanes after that. <laughs> Let's see if Zeta has more luck with different matchups. <laughs> 
10 seconds left. Now he mashes the purple button to make one more endgame play. Oh my god, what is happening? Oh my god. <laughs> I guess Zeta only managed to get a trade, so SK win the quarterfinals and advance to the next round. Oh wow, Lena really is super tall. <laughs> Definitely not a dwarf. <laughs> Oof. Larry only has 98 DPS and one kill in three rounds. Oh, how the broken evil twins have fallen. Oof. So, as I said before, this match was pretty crazy. Since both teams were so evenly matched skill-wise, it really did come down to their drafts. If Zeta hadn't gone Larry and Lori in the last set and opted for another brawler who wasn't so reliant on walls, they might have won. But at the end of the day, both of these teams played extremely well and deserve to be commended for their amazing gameplay, even if they are way too passive sometimes. <laughs> So, if you like this video, make sure to check out my other esports videos that I did on last month's monthly finals. And if you guys find any match particularly crazy this month, make sure to let me know. <laughs> For this match, I, honest to god, commented on as I went along because it happened while I was asleep so I didn't see it live. <laughs> And I'm sure the same thing might happen to me next time, so make sure to let me know. I love it when you guys give me suggestions. But until then, play later guys! Mwah.